In all our prior discussions, I have emphasized on how OpenAI has been nailing the large language model game. But now, Google has made a strong comeback with its latest Bard update. Let me tell you, this is bigger and a little bit more disappointing than you think. But how? Let's find out. Imagine you are organizing an event, keeping a count of booked tickets, and coordinating with friends about every intricate aspect of the upcoming event. All of it seems like a time-consuming task for just one person, right? But hold that thought, because with the latest advancements in Google's AI tool BARD, you can effortlessly manage all of this and more in record time. BARD is rapidly on its way to becoming the epitome of innovation in the AI world. But how is so much integration possible? And how can one tool revolutionize the way we navigate the vast landscape of the internet? Well, it's not a dream anymore, because the recent update to BARD is capable of everything you might deem of impossible with LLMs. The latest update to the tool, introduced as a limited access experiment, harnesses the power of a lightweight, expansive language model to gather feedback and iterate. In my previous videos, I did tell you that the BAR team, since its initial launch, acknowledged their lackings in comparison to ChatGPT and Bing. So they have been working and finding ways to integrate BARD into all of the Google apps and services consumers make use of. BARD is now far more than just a chatbot. First, let me send Google kudos for its entirely new experience. While ChatGPT made waves across the globe, Google's BARD is reshaping the AI landscape. Secondly, unlike ChatGPT, which relies on a finite database, BARD sources its data directly from the vast expanse of the web, which makes it way more formidable if its application is well integrated with other internet-based services. You must be wondering, how is that possible? Well, BARD is actually powered by a familiar technology, Google's language model for dialogue applications, Lambda. Bringing the discussion to September 2023, Google unveiled three significant updates for BARD. Integration with Google Apps and Services is a key feature of the BARD September update. BARD has gained the ability to access various Google apps and services, including Gmail, Docs, Drive, Maps, YouTube, Hotels, and Flights. This functionality allows users to leverage BARD for inquiries regarding personal data and real-time information. For instance, users can request summaries of their Gmail inbox, locate specific files in Google Drive, or obtain directions to nearby restaurants. BARD has now also become smart enough to offer collaboration capabilities on content within Gmail, Docs, and Drive. Users can ask BARD for for assistance in finding, summarizing, and answering questions related to their personal content. For example, BARD can aid in composing blog posts, summarizing research papers, or creating presentations. I think this feature, to be specific, is Google's answer to Windows Copilot. Google claims that the accuracy of BARD has also become better. This means that users can have increased confidence in the information generated by BARD. For example, when inquiring about current events, BARD can provide links to reputable sources for users to independently verify the information. In terms of improvements, BARD is now available in over 40 languages, broadening its accessibility to a global audience. Image uploads with Google Lens, incorporation of Google search images in responses, and options to modify BARD's responses in terms of length and tone are now accessible in all supported languages. The Google It feature has also been refined to offer more pertinent results for users to cross-verify BARD's responses with Google Search. To top it off, BARD has also been integrated into Maps, YouTube, and more. If you forgot the last favorite YouTube video of yours, you can inquire BARD. Seeking directions from Maps via BARD is promising to be another banger. Now, tell me what is the major thing you look forward to in a good assistant? Obviously, confidentiality and privacy. So, to make BARD your Alfred Pennyworth, Google has addressed all the privacy-related concerns. Not only that, with BARD, extensions are easily toggleable for enhanced privacy. BARD also now offers customizable communication, allowing users to not only read but also listen to responses in their preferred style for their unique preferences. All this sounds pretty cool, right? But for some reason, my internet feed is full of posts that say, BARD fails to deliver again. Why is that so? Upon my research, I found an article on Venture Beat where a user summarized his stress testing experience. This person, in practice, found BAR to be disappointing on multiple levels. The first big shock upon reading this was that it didn't live up to its main promise of seamlessly integrating with Google Apps and often provided inaccurate or nonsensical responses. Now this is big. 
because what Google always promised with this model was its integratability. The user demonstrated that it lacked the creative capabilities and versatility seen in OpenAI's GPT-4. The responses were bland and had a robotic sense of humor. Although some users might not find issue with that, the user describes that the core of this issue lay in the AI's underlying model, Palm 2, which powered Bard's new features. Like all language models, Palm 2 was a product of its training data and could only generate responses based on the content it had been exposed to. According to a CNBC report, Palm 2 was trained on approximately 340 billion parameters, in contrast to the rumored 1.8 trillion parameters of GPT-4. This indicated that GPT-4 had access to a wealth of information and knowledge compared to Palm 2, likely aiding in generating more relevant and engaging text. Now, this is another big blow because Google always promised real-time conversion and processing. So if the base model is unable to support these claims, I think Google needs to reevaluate their model. Now, since the major problems are out of the way, I'm going to share this user's experience because he or she literally nitpicked everything. To his or her experience, document in docs and create an email summary. Bard responded with, I do not have enough information and refused to retrieve any documents from the user's Google Drive. It later provided a poorly summarized document and drafted an unusable email. Another instance demonstrated Bard's poor performance when asked to find the best deals from San Francisco to Los Angeles on Google Flights. Bard responded by drafting an email explaining how to manually search for airfare on Google Flights, displaying its inadequate performance. Attempts to utilize Bard for creative tasks, such as writing a song or a screenplay, yielded either ignored input or bland, unoriginal content lacking flair. Unlike GPT-4, Bard also lacked the option to adjust its creativity level through a dial, limiting user control over output. The user claims that the sole commendable feature of Bard was its built-in capability allowing users to verify its answers via Google search. By clicking the Google it button after a prompt, users could compare Bard's response with Google search results, with Bard highlighting potentially false or misleading portions of its output. I am a little skeptical over here because while this feature helped reduce errors, it also revealed Bard's unreliability and lack of accuracy. Now, over this whole situation of unfulfilled promises, here are my two cents. This matters significantly because Google, being a major player in the technology and innovation realm, held considerable influence over how people accessed and utilized information. Its products and services are extensively used worldwide, shaping communication, learning, work, and play. To maintain its position as an AI leader and outperform competitors, Google needed to surpass Bard's limitations. Bard was more than just a chatbot. It was a representation of Google's vision and values. Intended to be an assistant enhancing user productivity and creativity, Bard unfortunately fell short on all fronts, proving unhelpful and often frustrating. I think Google as a company is finding itself in a race with an AI beast like OpenAI. We need to keep it in mind that while Google has a big aspiration, they need to spend more time in stress testing and evaluation of Bard's capabilities before rolling out newer versions. I'm saying this because if something is wrong at the core, it cannot be fixed after there are layers and layers of code running on its top. This testing should involve subjecting Bard to high demand scenarios, pushing it to its limits in terms of processing capacity, input length, or concurrent user interactions. By doing so, Google's developers can identify potential weaknesses, performance bottlenecks, or unexpected behaviors that might arise when the system is under pressure. Secondly, stress testing assists in uncovering vulnerabilities and potential biases in the LM. Language models often learn from vast amounts of data from the internet, which can inadvertently incorporate biases present in the data. If you remember, in February, the market value of Google's parent company plummeted by over $100 billion due to inaccuracies in its Bard chatbot ad and perceived deficiencies in the details provided during its AI search event concerning how it plans to address Microsoft's ChatGPT challenge. If Google doesn't want to lose any more money, this is the table that it needs to sit down on and work around the vulnerabilities of Bard. Will they be successful? Only time can answer this question. Subscribe to Innovella for more blues from the world of AI and technology. I have made another video on the more hardware side of things discussing Tesla's humanoid robots and how they have improved over the years. Click on the video popping up to find out.